let's do the oh hey folks welcome back welcome back to this channel that's for sure it's been a long time hasn't it and uh welcome to stranded alien dawn mm-hmm i've chosen this as the first game i want to toss back into the channel kind of a oh very much like RimWorld. there are a lot of aspects that are just like it except it's so much cooler <laughs> oh the graphics are amazing Unlike RimWorld, you're not fighting enemy factions. You are fighting the them. You're fighting the uh, the wildlife of this planet, and man, they come in harsh waves. Anyway, let's um let's dive into this new game and crash landing. I believe is our only scenario. Yeah, while en route to the outer worlds, the passenger ship Alien Dawn. Oh, I never read this before. That's how the name of the game came about. Suffers a catastrophic hyperdrive malfunction and starts breaking apart in orbit of an unknown planet. Up to four passengers reach one of the emergency landing pods. This is the story of their survival. Their mission? Find a way back to civilization. Okay, um, we'll choose that one. Um, there we go. So regions, we've got, let me turn my volume down a little bit there. Still dialing in settings and and uh, trying to figure out how to do this recording thing again. It's been a long time. Uh, region Sobrius is a temperate mountainous area with large meadows as compared to Desertum. Nope, don't do that. I wanted to read it. There we go. Hot desert dominated by dunes, oases, and dry riverbeds. I've been watching Solid Content, another YouTube channel, playing this, and he's using that map. He's having all kinds of troubles with uh, with temperatures. It, it's either way too cold or way too hot all the time. So I'm gonna go with this one just to make it a little easier. Moon Concordia. This, these three remind me of RimWorld, Cassandra and Randy and you know the um, the tone of the game I guess you could put it the narrator of the game so Jason sends tough challenges but provides time to prepare for them whereas Nyx is the goddess of night and governs everything that lurks in the dark be it a thought an action or a daemon hmm chaos at the beginning there was chaos everything appeared out of chaos and will return to chaos I'm going to stick with, uh, for our first series, something that's not going to kill me on my third episode. Game difficulty will stick to medium. That translates to landing with 80 scraps, 60 meals, 10 first aid kits, and a laser pistol. Um, you can go crazy with these. I'm not going to medium. And let's drop down to game rules. I was looking at these, and I'm really liking this one. We don't need to have a peace only map we don't have to have the extremes of no skills or all skills but this one start the game with a cast of random survivors based on the seats selected as a bonus all survivors capable of combat will have a railgun sniper those railgun snipers are, are are nice they're quite powerful they they will help you to survive the beginning of the game till you wear them out but um let's do that rather than take the time to go through Oh, there must be 40 or 50 characters that you can read their bios, figure out what they're they're what they're capable of, their skills, their benefits and, and not benefits. And it, it takes a while to really put together a crew and then you can really nerf it to super easy or or super hard. So let's just let this happen randomly. It's based upon the seed that we put in. And let's type in Noble Rambler. I don't know where I came up with that. And if you want to do that yourself, if you have this game, then you'd most likely land on the same map that, uh, that we're going to land in. So confirm you and hit next. Um, it's going to get loud at this point, so I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me, if I'm going to be able to talk over it, but uh, I'll, I'll, we'll see. If you can hear me, you can kind of see the world we're about to land in. 
high mountainous, rugged. There's some water down there. And we're here. And if, uh, whoa, and more is coming. In fact, if I remember right, there's still a few more to drop. Let's head over here a little bit. Can I zoom up? Not really. There they are. Yeah, pause. Look at that. Look at the graphics in this thing. Yeah, there's another one coming in over there. You ever want to pause a meteor and just uh, observe it? Oh. Okay, sounds like things have calmed down now. Let's pause. We've got four characters. I see Carter is having a little bit of a breakdown over here. It was it was quite a scary event. I'll, I'll give him that. And we've got a map. And I already see something over there. We've got critters. Happy critters, angry critters. I guess we'll find out. Hmm. These maps are bigger than you would think. Think of RimWorld playing on the extra large map. The one that takes down the resources of your computer. This does go for quite some time. I've, I was in here monkeying around just trying to figure out uh, how everything worked. I've watched solid content play it. I've played very little myself just to get a feel for it. Once I saw how similar it was to RimWorld, I decided, yeah, let's just dive in. It's, the concepts are all pretty much the same as setting up your initial camp there and surviving. Ooh, bug nest. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to see under that, so pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> but uh, spike tails. Oh, these are going to be fun. Not. <clears throat> Hate to have to have to tangle with them. We're over there. So if you wanted to move around and set up your camp in a different area than where you landed, there are a lot of areas to choose from. I've not seen things like caves and digging underground. That, at least at this point, is not a thing. And needing to camp near water for drinking is not a thing. Thirst isn't doesn't play into it. Though I do see, I saw this as we landed. We got some water down here. Otherwise, that's kind of, let's see, can we get over the top? And does, it, does the map go even further that way? Ooh, what are you guys? You are leather and meat. That's what I'm... Hamburgers. Yep. Oh, wow. Kind of nice up here. Ah. Got a little oasis. You've got lots of... Boy, how many ships have crashed on this planet? A lot of scavenging to do. A lot of parts that we can get out of this. A lot of noise. It's windy up here. I need to have to listen to that for 50 episodes. Yep. And getting out of here to go and scavenge and get resources, that's a long walk just to get back home again. That's like living on the third or fourth floor of a building without an elevator every day. <laughs> that's a lot of walking. All right, so like RimWorld, we will just set up a quick little base camp, get us some a roof over our heads for the night, and and a uh, place to sleep and start gathering some basic resources. Let's see who our characters are. Yeah, I've got surround sound in the studio and I'm hearing wind and fire and things all around me. I don't think you guys are. YouTube uh, doesn't do surround sound yet, but <clears throat> unless you're on YouTube TV, I think is capable of that now, but I'm just putting out I don't know if I'm putting out stereo or mono. I guess I'll find out. <laughs> but um, anyway, this is a place where I don't have too much noise hitting me. Let's see who Carter is and how this works. Um, overview. Key stats and information. So he's got a railgun sniper. I see all four of them do, so they're all capable of combat. He's got a heat and cold tolerance. I assume that has something to do with the clothing that they're wearing, which is there. Okay, so he's got a shirt 
pants, shoes, a space for a jacket, a space for a hat, a space for a melee weapon, and a railgun sniper. Okay, what do we miss here? His health. Good, not bleeding out. A little bit of pain. Um, I'm seeing smoke inhalation and a little, little bit of dementia starting up on him. Okay, temperature is normal. In fact, our temperature, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, kind of cool. You know, spring, uh, right between winter and spring right up here. Okay, so blue must be winter. We're just starting first day of spring. Okay, so if we're going to get to any kind of farming, we've got to figure that out soon. Um, moving on, happiness. I won't do this for everybody, but let's run the tabs for Carter so we can see how this works. Um, so just like RimWorld, you got your positives and negatives for each person. And based upon their, their environment, their, their personality, uh, their, probably their interactions with others, negatives and positives. Survivor's determination, we're gonna make this happen. 50 plus. We survived the crash and didn't die. 25 plus. Okay. But he is in crash shock, whereas Paulette isn't. So that's why he's having a full on meltdown. Okay. So inventory, we saw that because of these, there's our hot and cold tolerance. And armor ratings gives us our blunt piercing energy and gas deflection. Okay. Some interesting stats there. Skills. We have combat, construction, cooking, crafting, farming, healing, intellect, and physical. And so Carter's skills are construction and intellect. Okay, here's his best ones. We've got, what do they call that? Profile, details, and traits. So Carter is a career criminal. <laughs> Carter grew up in and out of prison. He likes to say he's been a wanted man all of his life. There was an attempt to remove his criminal tendencies via electric shock therapy, but it did not catch. <laughs> I'm sure there's no permanent damage there or anything. A jack of all trades and master of none, he typically defrauds tourists of their excessive wealth. He likes a drink and is happy to laugh the days away. Fast learner learns skills twice as fast. That's nice. Entertainment junkie. Needs to relax twice as often. He likes bread and drinking alcoholic beverages. So those must give him a boost to his happiness down here. Had a drink, plus 10 or something like that. So that is who Carter is. And we can set restrictions on what foods to eat or not eat, beverages, relaxation items. I want to say that's instruments so far. I don't remember there being any drugs in this game, but there weren't any at the beginning of RimWorld either, but they added a lot of stuff in. Yeah, so there'll be uh, well, at least tobacco, you know, some kind of a smoke leaf in here, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what else, what, what updates hit the game eventually. But you'll be able to turn those on and off over here. All right, so we have read about Carter. Let's go take a peek at him. So from what we can see, that's Carter. Paulette, you are over here. So that is Paulette. And pull out away from the noise a little bit and read her profile. She is a runaway housewife, the eldest and least favorite of three daughters. Paulette left home early and married a wealthy but domineering lawyer who always put work first. After feeling after years of feeling lonely and neglected, one day she simply decided to take off. Her family never understood why she left a man who provided for her financially and so did not welcome her back home. Now she is always on the move, driven by the need to support herself and desire to escape the ghosts of her past. Traits, neurotic personality, manipulation efficiency is increased by 50%. So she can manipulate people. I guess that's what that is. And she smokes as her stress relief. Okay. Um, inventory. <clears throat> She's also got a jacket. So, okay. 35 and 39. No. Oh, that. 
is the upper and lower of the jacket. Okay, she can go all the way down to 21. Whereas Carter could only go down to 35 before he's going to be feeling it. So she's, although she needs to, she will overheat more quickly because she's wearing the jacket. Okay, I wonder if they take them off automatically. I don't know how intelligent the AI is. Uh, is there anything else with her that we need to look at? Uh, Health-wise, she's got smoke inhalation. They probably all do. Otherwise, she's fine. And this is all typical. Um, she does have more blunt armor than Carter because of her jacket. Okay. And she excels in cooking and crafting. <clears throat> Not interested in combat or healing. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's move into Rita, who is right here. There she is. And what do we know about Rita? She is an adventurous botanist. Lively and strong-willed Rita always had an interest in plants, so it was no surprise that she graduated top of her class in xenobotany. What shocked everyone was her decision to decline a job as a lecturer and sign up for a program helping planets on the verge of ecological collapse. This would take Rita to all sorts of weird places around the universe, something that she greatly enjoys and treasures. Um, she has a natural curiosity, <clears throat> has a chance to field observe unknown species during expeditions. Manage research. We're there. We are going to be able to research a, a hot air balloon, which will take us out on expeditions to places way beyond our map. That must be what they're talking about. So, field observe unknown species during expeditions. So, we can go into different plants and observe them and learn about them and then be able to replant them. So, she can do that uh, on those expeditions, whereas I guess others cannot. <clears throat> has a personality permanent has permanently increased happiness for a personality okay likes meat pies and taking walks um inventory she also has a jacket um here farming so she was a botanist so farming is her specialty she's decent in combat um happiness all these are Typical, her health is good, except smoke inhalation. All right, so excels in farming and combat. Yep. Yeah. Simon, uh, let's double click on you. There you are. There is Simon. Simon is best at intellect in combat. So, yeah, so he'll be researching and probably doing the observing, unless that is a botany farming thing. We'll see. Uh, okay, in a few things. Uh, let's just get into his profile. Who is Simon? He's a corporate spy. Hmm. Back on Earth, Simon was a street magician whose ultimate trick was to make your wallet disappear. And to do so well, you applaud him. Hmm. Once he robbed some suit that spectated one of his shows only to find them later wanting, awaiting for him at his place. Turns out he was a big shot in a major pharmaceutical company who wanted to make him an offer of a lifetime. I've got a fire crackling back in my corner there. Well, now it's over in that corner. Okay, <laughs> it's loud in here right now. Uh, now with five years in the corporate spying biz, Simon is heading back to Earth to headquarters for the first time since then circulating in his bloodstream an experimental vaccine he stole from a competitor. Hmm, good or bad? Um, traits, healthy. Plus 100 health, recovers health twice as fast. That must be the vaccine. Thrombophilia, bleeding is permanently decreased by 5 health per hour. He's a fast walker. He's got some good traits. He enjoys meat pies and smoking. That's two meat pies, right? Yeah, and that's two smokings. And then we have taking walks and drinking and bread. Meat pies, bread. We need to find smoke leaf. We need to 
be able to ferment something to give them the optimal, um, make their lives happier. Okay. Um, like Rim World, you want to set up a bunch of things for them to do before you release it because daytime's not going to last very long and there's a lot to get done. Let's just kind of look around. I don't want to get too far of a walk away. Um, these are like pumpkins. Oops, the other way. I think there's a pile of them right over there. So I'm not going to click on these or anything over here that's different that's not over there. Um, you look like ore. Interesting rock. We will observe you. Oh, and she just got triggered. Run over there and observe that. I didn't mean for you to do that the very first thing. I might turn that off once we get back there. More pumpkins over there. More of these critters. Oh, there's some other critters. Who are you guys? So we've got these. What name we want to call them, I don't know. Exoskeleton, so they're bug-like. Hmm. And we've got... Gigantic dragonflies. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, they're gonna be interesting. And what are you? Ah, big chickens. You ever see what happens when you, when a mouse gets into a chicken coop? It is not a nice sight to watch. I tell you, chickens are very carnivorous. I have a feeling these are too. So, you are interesting, but there's more of you closer. We're heading that direction. I don't want to get too far away from home as far as long walks. Anything unusual in here? We've got giant grass. Let's trigger one of those. They may only grow around, around water, so that may be the closest one. We've got... Blueberries. These what looks like blueberries. What is the closest one to these guys? We'll say this is. So you guys come and observe that one. And these are very plant versus peculiar bush. So we're looking around through here. That's probably the closest to them. Let's grab one of those. Let's have them go out and observe everything that looks like food. So I was seeing something that looked like corn over there. So we'll pick a close one of those, but let's continue. Oh, hello. What are you? Oh, jelly bugs. Yeah. Um, they don't look dangerous. They look like they, they enjoy blueberries, too. I'll leave you guys alone for now. More dragonflies. They eat blueberries as well. Okay. We've got just stone. What is... Sounds like rain. I guess it's the leaves blowing in the wind. A little overzealous there. Ooh, what are you? You're like a... Well, you look like cotton. Okay, I think you might be important. Here's the corn-like plant. Closest is all the way over here. Now, I do know that we need to be looking for something like mushrooms. It seems like they are they were important for healing so we'll keep an eye on that these kind of look rubbery hmm yeah well they don't look like food unless this is food it could be but you don't want to queue up too many things at first or you'll get a little of nothing done a whole bunch of nothing done unless they do dedicate themselves to finishing one task before moving on to the next Looking for mushrooms. They're kind of an orange glowy mushroom. That's more of the pumpkins, more of the corn. Kind of this color, but that is nothing. Okay. Oh, is that our... Yeah, that's probably our smoke leaf or this game's version of it. Is there anything closer than that? What are you? You are... You are... How did I walk right by these and not notice? Okay, so you we will observe. For those that uh, are going to 
get a negative by not having a cigarette. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. I think these are the guys we're looking for. Orange mushrooms. Let's observe you guys. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the game won't let you do anything with them until you've observed them. So cutting them down may not net anything. And they may not be fully ripe yet, I don't know. We do have orders collect all, cut, mine, harvest, attack, hunt, butcher, repair, deconstruct. We could try to harvest these. Nothing comes up. So either it's because we don't know what they are or we are out of season. It's just the beginning of spring. Okay. So that gave us a lot of things to observe. And I know that we can't replant trees or bushes or whatnot until we observe them also. But let's concentrate on food for now. You guys are already going off to observe things and you grabbed the very first two that I did, which were too far away. So I'll cancel those orders in a moment. But I do know we're going to need a lot of wood, a lot of twigs, a lot of hay, stone, all your basic materials. So let's get a bunch of those queued up. Um, if I were to do this, it will give me a choice. Let's go to rocks and then we'll mine. Okay. Do that. You guys are all... Oh, we have different things here. Oh, we have wide leaf plants and broad leaf bushes. So if we pick the wide leaf plants, mark plants to be cut. Cutting crops could lead to loss of harvest. So not waiting to harvest, but to cut. Okay. We don't want to do that. The bush, though, will give us sticks. That's what we want. And I'm thinking, just looking this place over, to be near here so we're doing less walking at the very beginning, let's drop a little encampment in here. We're protected by the trees, rocks, rocks to our back, and we can, well, I want to say we can see enemies coming in, but way out over there somewhere was that bug nest, and they might come through the trees. And we might not see them coming. Hmm. Let's cut some of those trees down so we can get a little bit of a, of a buffer, a little bit of a, of a view of that area. So there's a bunch of sticks for us. Let's cut down uh, 10 trees. Might be too much. There's fallen in there. There's the fallen. If I double click, do I get more fallen? I got four fallen out of that. What if I do this? No, but it just grabs a group over there. Cut you. And now it grabs the fallen over there. Cut you. Sure. I wonder if that would... I wonder... Okay. Does it tell us what it'll net? 30. 14 of 30. Oh, it's not fully grown. If it were bigger, 19 of 30. Nice. So it's, it's smart enough to know that you get more wood out of a bigger tree. Okay. So we're capable of up to 30. So if we want to selectively cut and take out all of the 25s and more in here and let the trees grow up. I like that. Versus a log, which gives us 10. I'm just wondering if it's faster. Is it a fast 10? Let's find out. So that's, that's our wood. That's our sticks. And it's something like you guys for hay, right? Hey, there we go. So let's grab a bunch of this blade grass. Cut you. So there's plenty of all four basic materials, what I'll call them, that they can set off to go and do. And stockpile. Let's give them a place to bring everything back to. Storage. We have stockpiles and shelves at this point. And stockpile doesn't seem to have any building materials, whereas a storage unit either takes two wood or two scrap metal, which we have 80 scrap metal right now. So stockpile, and we're stuck with a grid. I guess we're going kind of this orientation. Okay, so let's stockpile. Well, six wide ought to do. Hold the shift down. I'm going to do two rows of it. Right there. Okay. So someone will come and build that. Others will come start chopping things and cutting things. 
They're not marked. Did I do that wrong? Let's do that again. Broadleaf. Bushes. Okay, then let's do this a little more carefully and just take you guys. Okay, cut. Now they're working. All right, you guys are still lit up. You guys are still lit up. You guys are lit up. One, two, I thought I did three. Uh, we'll do you. All right, so 20, 20, and 20. So there's 60 stone in there. With that, well, I was going to turn them on, but they're running off to go absorb way out there. So there was a way to kind of mass draft. There we go. Draft, shift, and left mouse draft and select all armed survivors. Shift, click. There we go. Now if we undraft, they're going to rethink their lives and pick the nearest task to them. But what task do we want to give them? I was going to do this later, but it does make sense to get this done now. I know nothing's really happening for, what are we, a uh, half hour into this video, but a lot of games are like this. you got to set things up before you let everything loose, or you're just going to not survive the night, you know, depending on where you're, where you're at. Um, let's decide who's going to be doing what, whose strengths are there. Very RimWorld-like in that you've got simple priorities or not simple priorities where you can choose by numbers. Simple priorities in a game like this generally work from left to right. Heal is your most important category. Somebody's injured, the first thing everyone's going to do is go and try and heal them. And when they're done, they're going to handle, which is lighting torches, supplying fuel to devices, and opening windows. Then they go on to construct and they work their way through by priority until they get to the end, which means you never get anything delivered. Or you set yourself up with the not so simple ones and you you have a one through probably five, one through five uh, priority, which means they're going to start at the left and they're going to find their first one. And wherever that is, that's what they're going to do first work through all the ones, then they're going to go back and look for their first two. If those ones don't have a job to do, there is nothing to construct. So this one I have noticed does a good job of showing you over there all that, all the other skills for that category. So Rita is the best, you know, from one to 10, she is a two, the others are a one in healing, which means really none of them are very good, but healing now, it's the opposite here. One is your highest, whereas ten is your highest over there. But whoever gets injured, whoever is available, go stick a band-aid on them and thank you. Handle is a little more difficult to work with in that what you don't want is someone that just finished up a job way out over there to run back in here to open a window and then run back all the way out there again to do the next task in line. So setting this as a one, there's a danger of that. It depends on the intelligence of the game. And I, I guess we're gonna find out if, if they run, like RimWorld used to be, they used to uh, you know, drop everything and go run all the way in just to uh, stock a, a stockpile. So I'm gonna make these twos, not ones. Construct, Carter. Is our best constructor he's a one nobody else can but what i've learned is you want to at least mark a five so that if you need paulette to just go and give a tap and finish that job over there she at least can give it a try otherwise it might say that uh, she's not assigned to work on that that category of job and not let you do it at all hunting rita's the best i don't see us needing to do a lot of hunting I've, like I said, I've watched solid content play this game, and before long, we're going to have a whole bunch of bug meat just kind of sitting at our gate, ready to be butchered, because we're going to be attacked. So, hunting is probably not a high priority in this game. Um, let's mark two, three, three, and five. Three will be not as important, but you will get to it if you got nothing else to do. 
Harvest is a farming job, which is Rita, the botanist. So she is number one there. Um, Carter and Paulette are capable of it. So RimWorld gave, had the, the situation where you could botch a harvest job and get no fruit out of that if you screwed it all up. I don't know how you screw up picking a tomato off of a vine, but that happened, and I don't know to what extent this follows that. Let's put fives on that and let Rita just handle all that. So it would be the same for planting. There, there, and there. Cutting is physical. Okay, so Carter is good at it, but this is a good way to skill up all of their physical. Get, get them out, get some exercise. Um, threes or twos? Let's put twos on this one. Ones are going to be their most important jobs. Twos are jobs that are still important. You kind of need those logs, those trees. So, yeah, let's let's do that. Scavenge is to go out to the uh, old wrecks, old spaceships, and get scrap metal and find things that are hidden in them. Um, it's a physical job. So Carter is the most equipped, but not by much. So... Let's do threes for everybody else. Mining is physical, so that is Carter as well. And for now, we'll do that same sort of thing. Cooking, that is Paulette. She's cooking and crafting. So let's just right off the bat make her ones all the way across. And the comparison is that Simon and Carter are a little better than Rita. Hmm. Let's make everybody else threes on those. They'll fill in whichever one doesn't have any other ones or twos to be working on. Because these are all going to be kind of important, though Paulette is the best. We won't queue up too many cooking jobs, so she won't spend her entire time cooking. She'll be able to get into some of these, but you know, and maybe she never gets to assembling because she never gets past the crafting and tailoring unless some of these others fill in some of the some of the tasks there. Observing, that is a Simon thing. He is the intellect. So he is the number one on these two. Um, otherwise, threes across? I suppose so. Delivering can be anybody. But it's the end of the run, and they're going to be working on all these ones, twos, and threes before they ever get down here. I think these need to be ones. I think it's more of an efficiency thing. If they're going to be working on on a workbench trying to craft something and have to run across the map for whatever to go and craft it that's going to really kill our efficiency and make it hard to ever have any supplies so i think that's a pretty high priority so we'll fine tune these as we go so with that we now know who's going to be cutting we know who's going to be um mining who's going to be whatever observing scavenging Nobody is assigned. When I say go, they should evaluate the map based upon this, which means, let's predict this a little bit, Carter is first going to construct. So he's probably first thing when he gets done crying, come over here and build this. Paulette's first one doesn't count right now, except for delivering. So she might start transporting things that are just laying around the crash site that got thrown up around when we hit the ground. So she'll probably start transporting. Then Rita, harvesting, planting. Neither of those are a thing yet. She may go straight into delivering as well. And then she'll probably drop into cutting. Okay, Simon will go straight to observing. Let's see if that works. They reevaluated. No, we went to cutting for both of these two because there's no stockpile yet. Once the stockpile comes, these two will go into transporting. Okay. All right, and he is observing. What's he observing? He it. What was that noise I just heard? It wasn't my stomach. It sounded like something just growled back there. Hmm. Oh, maybe their moves just traveled across the map. 
Hmm. I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> yeah, this this surround sound in this room now. I'll tell you, zombie games are a little bit difficult to to get through. Simon is working on the tall leafy plants. That might have been him. I think he just went, hmm, yeah, maybe maybe that's what I heard. There goes Carter. He is constructing a stockpile. Yep, so construction is his first number one that has that qualifies. So that is how this works. We also have schedule to think of. And you do want to demand or force them to relax once in a while or they get so stressed out that they won't work anymore. So we'll see to what extent that is a thing here. There are, there is the, uh, I'm looking at these purple plants. Is that just background? Yeah, I can't observe them. Okay. Um, there is the, the school of thought that make all day long in anything and they'll just go to sleep when they are tired and they'll eat when they're hungry and they don't have to follow a regiment. It is nice though to have, well, I guess, back and forth on that one to have everybody up at the same time to be able to interact with each other but if you're being attacked in the middle of the night it might be nice to have a couple of people that are actually wide awake in the middle of the night i don't know we'll think about that but right now their traits for their overview has rest at nearing 100 percent they they you know they landed in good shape so we don't need to set them to be able to uh um, just looking at what's going on here to have to sleep. Let's let them work into the night. So we are transporting. We're bringing things. We now have wood. We now have twigs. Let's pause that there. That means that we now have shelter. Uh, no, we need hay. Click on that. Oh, we need sticks and hay, not wood. So we need to get somebody out to there to get us some hay. Is there any closer? Nothing. I didn't notice any, but I have, guess I, did I look up here? Now we've got smoke leaf up here. We've got more of those rubbery plants. I don't see any more of that look. In fact, I see very little of that look. Those are all blueberries. Maybe here? Uh, control lets you go, no, that's shadows. Control lets you zoom faster. Wow, we don't have much in, in the way of this kind of grass. What do we call it? That is blade grass. As far as, I don't know how much requires hay, but we may need to plant blade grass. Here's some more over here. That's a long walk. Okay, so blade grass is going to have to get planted pretty soon, which is why I didn't uh, select all of it. Let's get an observe in there. I might want to get that one growing soon. And a big old patch of it to replace what we're using. But, so, I need someone to do that. Out in this area, we've got Paulette and Rita. Rita is the botanist. I don't know if that makes a difference as far as how fast she can cut grass. But, uh, let's get her working over here. She can observe it, she can cut it, or we can cancel the order. So, let's cut blade grass. Get you to work on that one. As soon as she picks it up, it should drop into her inventory. Then we can get working with it. Once that happens, I can drop blueprints down here for um, our, our, our little base camp, our, our uh, quick little emergency camp, which means Carter can then get to work on it. We're already at noon, day one of year one. So I didn't notice what time we started, eight or nine in the morning. It will go by faster than, than, uh, than is good. <laughs> so we're bringing meals. So that, oh, that's medicines. 60 meals, 80 stone that he's transporting. 60 stone, no, 80, he's got 60. Wood, six, scrap metal. And there, Rita must have just started chopping on the hay. Right over there, she cut it, and boom. And she didn't pick it up yet, so it's still not being registered in our inventory. Once it is, which she may go through and cut all of it before she picks it up. And I guess that's fine because it's going to be a long walk bringing it all back. Let's maybe we should just go through this one clump over here. It's getting closer and 
watch the animations. Okay, that enough? We're in. Okay, pause. We've now got enough to unlock our blueprint so I can start setting this up. Carter's not going to be able to build anything just yet because the hay hasn't arrived, but he can start thinking about it. Shelter made out of sticks. A stick shelter. R rotates things around, and I think a row of them along here with, with the stockpile there, maybe another row of them here. That should give us lots of uh, under the roof spaces. Um, we are going to need a campfire out in front. Let's, I think that will work pretty good. So hold down the shift, you can put multiples down like that and then we've got sleep mats and no materials interesting so they're freebies and like RimWorld these folks will disturb each other when they're trying to sleep and give them a whole bunch of negatives that someone bugged them in their sleep so let's maybe split them up probably there's only a 50% chance of them getting, getting bugged um, campfires, can we do that yet? We have stones, yes we can. And let's pick the stone one, save our scrap metal. And I see there is a sphere of influence. So you can see it, it affects these guys, I assume in a good way. So maybe they feel safe if they're near it. I can't get all of them out of one campfire. So let's, we got plenty of wood twigs, whatever, sticks, whatever this thing takes. Let's go ahead and set two of these in. So one there and one there. And that gives us a basic camp for Carter to start dropping off materials and start working on. Insufficient materials, we need another nine. Nope, we're not anymore. We got it all. Okay. So you're going to set these up. And like RimWorld, they get disappointed when they don't have a table to eat at. So how about we set up sleeping, some storage, shelving, and maybe some workbenches in here. Build another group over here. Food, dining, and what else? Medicines, things like that on that side. Don't think we need to duplicate the campfires though. So let's... Let's set this up while I'm talking about it, since we have the blueprints available to us now. There we go. Um, stockpile is there. This could be closer. In fact, it'll be within the sphere of influence of the campfire. If we do that, there's still one space to walk in front of the stockpiles. Let's do that. We'll do kind of a duplicate over here. Now we're short on other things. Um, need more of those and more of the sticks, which came out of here. So it's just a matter of someone going over there and knocking down another bush. We still have plenty of those queued up, so they will eventually happen. And in here, let's see what is available this early in the game for furniture. Yeah, we do have a table. And production, we have a cook stove. We have a workbench. We have a drying rack for meats. Okay. A large drying rack, a chopping block. Oh, it turns wood into sticks. Okay. Bushes. We have these, that one. We have quite a few over here. Let's not worry about creating sticks yet. They're pretty much just walk outside and grab one. So materials are going in. He's constructing a shelter. Let's make sure he constructs these first, so I might want to micromanage him a little bit. So you're dropping these goods off, but let's get the beds done first. Discovered grain cob. We'll, we'll check out that in a moment. Carter, why don't you work on... Can I? Carter, there we go. Give me the sleeping spots first. And if I hold my shift down like RimWorld, will it let me do two of them? I believe it will. So I think there's a chain there. He's going to do these two. Then he's going to walk over and do those. 
Yes, good, that works. So we have a place to sleep because we're already getting dark. 1800 hours already. Mm. Um, getting dark. Let's have you next do one, uh, two of the fires next. Ah, uh, you got the shelter. Let's do two of the fires. Then you'll go back and do the shelter. Okay, so you're taken care of. Paulette is transporting, transporting. We are short of materials for one more of these. Okay, so let's grab a table, furniture, large table out of wood. And that looks like that. Let's see here. Will it let me, well, we'll stick it in the middle. That way there's no, ooh, it puts, it gives you the chairs automatically. That's nice. Hold the shift down, one, two, and it rotates for you. Oh, I like when a game is smart. All right, so the table's gonna go there. I saw a stove, though these guys will let you cook. Quick recipe, so basic recipes here. The stove requires what? More sticks and scrap metal. It's gotta be done anyway. Let's go ahead and do it. Why didn't that work? Oh, because I, do I not have access to the blueprint? I do, okay. Something went wrong there. Um, let's do it this way. And I'm thinking we could put shelves this way from there to there and that should still let them get to their chairs let's put more shelves this way um let's rotate like this maybe the meals can go here for now so raw foods meals eat it cook it until we get refrigeration. Okay, medicines could probably land in here somewhere too. Eventually, this will just be logs and branches and things like that. Okay, you're doing a good job of putting that together. Let's have you work on the table for or next. You are constructing shelter. Work on the large table and then work on the chairs. So whoever grabs their first meal Nobody's eating yet. They will already have a place to sit down. I think that's working pretty good. How long am I going here? 52 minutes already. Wow. Well, what else is there to quickly set up? We could set these up next episode. Uh, workbenches and more storage and then fine tune all the storage. Um, let's, we're only running on slow speed and yet the day is gone. Let's look around and see what's going on out here. We've got our jelly bugs and our dragonflies and our birds who are still sleeping and just kind of milling around. Oh, we got more over here. You guys are off to do something. No, you're still just milling around too. I know they will attack each other. And I'm thinking nighttime is probably when they're going to want to do it. Um, that is that one. That is hay. And there's still plenty of hay queued up. Where are we at? Yeah, over there. So it's just a matter of waiting for them to do it. So no problems back at home. I'm just wondering if there's anything exciting happening out here. Ooh, shooting star. And I'm guessing that the overgrown chickens are probably going to be the source of any excitement around here. Where did they go? I lost ya. Did I overshoot you? Are you over here? Eh. Let's spin around here and try this again. See if I can get you all nauseous. Where did the... Okay, there's the jelly bugs. I'm sure we're going to find out what their real names. And we went this way. So they, they've left. They went off to go hunt. I think that's what's going on. You guys are sleeping. Okay, like cattle almost. Everything's quieting down. Oh well. One more pass over here and we'll call this episode done. What's that thump? Oh, we didn't read the green cob. Let's do that real quick. So, 
A good discovery. The seeds of the tall leafy plant cluster together in a cob and seem edible. Thus, I'm going to call it grain cob. It will be useful in many ways. Cooked, pressed into oil, distilled into sweet syrup or moonshine, even used in the production of antibiotics. Such a simple thing, yet so vital for survival. So we can now harvest it and we can now plant it. Okay, so next episode we will get into that. And I had, there you are. Are we running? We're not. No, you're on the, you're on patrol here, but you're still near your nest. So I guess you're not up to something. So maybe next episode we'll get to see what they're up to. But over here, last look at our camp for the night. What's everybody doing? We are chopping. We are building. Chopping means what? Simon is out there observing blade grass. And both pa uh, Paulette is cutting more sticks. And Rita is cutting down drop logs. Down logs. Okay. So this is probably a good place to call this one done for the night. We've got a place to sleep. We've got a roof over our head. Proved it. And um, campfire, we've got a place to get away from all the scaries out there. And we're still burning fuel from our down ship. And I think we're going to call this one done. Carter is taking a walk. He's meditating. Okay. So anyway, this has been Noble Rambler. And this is going to be a fun series. I'll catch you next time, folks. Bye-bye.